Let's make some jewelry out of pigment. So today for Blue Monday, I thought it would be appropriate to make something beautiful, something that, well, highlights pigment in another way than painting with it. So here I am taking a bit of uncolored polymer clay and I am adding PB29, ultramarine blue, my, I think, favorite pigment. And for this Blue Monday, it's quite fitting. So why am I adding pigment to this clay? Well, you can paint it or even buy colored polymer clay. Um, well, first of all, you know me and you know my channel. This is about pigments. Second of all, I want to add as much pigment as possible. So. I need to find a balance where the clay doesn't fall apart, where it's not getting too brittle when I cure it, but also that it holds so much pigment that there's no way around this blue. So as a blue pigment, this is quite vibrant when it's in its dry state and when it's in its wet state, a little less. So. I'm quite curious what this will do when I'm mixing it with clay, if it stays this vibrant or if it gets a bit darker. Also, if you're wondering, Lawrence, you're using your bare hands and you're working with pigment and you are a little dirtier blue than usual. That is right. Um, I'm using uh, liquid gloves for this. Check out the video um, just you know, on the top of the screen. If you want to see what that is, I'm also linking it down below in the description. But for now, I'm just kneading it with my bare hands. And why am I doing this? Because I like the feel of the clay a bit better. Not, I don't prefer the feel of it on my hands, but I feel like I have more control over how um, kneadable it still is. Well, it doesn't go for the pigment. It does go for the clay it sticks less to your bare hands than it does on the gloves that I have so uh, using my bare hands it, it does leave a lot of pigment on my hands but it'll wash right off um, but the clay doesn't stick as much as it would do with gloves on so while I'm doing this uh, I want to create a smooth clay out of it I want to get all the pigment particles I want to say dispersed but mixed into this clay um, because I need to cut this, I need to cure it, uh, it needs to stay together when I'm going to put it in my necklace pan. Um, I came with this idea uh, a while ago when I introduced a, I want to say line of jewelry, but uh, I have a pendant which is just filled with dry pigment, a uh, metal uh, with glass pendant that you can just... Uh, appreciate the dry pigment but I also want to uh, make a kind of tribute to the watercolor pans that I make so using a 3d printer um, using raw pigments just shining with their beautiful vibrant colors and you know I thought this would this would be the best way to do it I looked at painting uh, pans painting the clay with a uh, quite a pigmented um, gouache acrylic mix, uh, but that didn't nearly get as vibrant and as well close to the dry pigment as this method did. So I'm you know I'm sticking with this, and this is you know not so sticky to me anymore. So it gets quite smooth the more I need it. There's still a lot of dry uh, pigment and clay left on the slab, so I'm going to uh, introduce that again into that smooth paint, which I just had. I want to make this as pigmented as possible, like I just said. Um, and, you know, just keep going until it can't take any more pigment. And as you can see, it takes quite a lot of pigment. So I was really pleased when I was experimenting with this method. Um, it takes a lot of ultramarine blue. For other pigments, you need less or it can even take less. So that's interesting. Pigment properties also 
have uh, quite an influence on polymer clay. But turning out to be a beautiful blue, a little less vibrant, but maybe that'll change when it's fully cured. And what you can see here is the beauty of the liquid gloves I was talking about. They just washed right off my hands. So a very smooth polymer clay um, uh, that I'm left with. Now I'm flattening it out to create the layer that goes on top of my pan. So I'm, um, I've, I've designed a special pendant pan, a necklace pan for this, uh, which isn't like a half pan uh, full and filled with this clay, uh, but it just is the top layer. Uh, the rest is kind of all 3D printed. So here I'm uh, just measuring it out by using it as a stamp. And I'm cutting it out to be left with something that fits exactly into that pan. You do need to keep in mind that it shrinks just a little bit that's why I use the top of my pan, uh, just like a stamp like this, uh, when I'm putting it into the pan, and the pan is slightly uh, smaller on the inside, it works beautifully. So here I'm printing my pan, uh, just, you know, a time lapse. I have a little uh, hole in the pan to put the necklace through. Here I'm putting on a layer of varnish. This is a UV resistant varnish, which dries uh, in a matte finish. So uh, there's no shine to it. It's just fully matte, which I think um, looks most like a dried pan of paint. And I think it also resembles the dry pigment just a bit better than if it were to be a shiny one. Although shiny, is quite fitting for jewelry. I think this is more similar to what it is a tribute to. So as you can see, dried to a matte finish. Now I'm using a little glue to put this piece of clay into my necklace pan. I've used different kind of, uh, kinds of glue for this um, and some actually fell out of it. So I changed the glue, I changed the method of cutting for this. Uh, what you can see here is uh, the final result I have and it actually just fits quite snug into the pan. All the glue that spills out, I can just rub it off with my fingers since the varnish uh, actually doesn't really work well with glue. So I only varnished the top and side, not the bottom. I'm putting in putting through the necklace and I'm left with a fun kind of jewelry. Just a wink to the world of handmade watercolors and the people who appreciate pigments as much as I do. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and give me a follow if you don't already. See you next time and I hope you have a great and colorful day.